The Java ternary operator functions like a simplified if statement, which can be evaluated to a value. A normal if statement cannot be evaluated to a value. A normal if statement can only select between two blocks to execute, depending on whether a condition is true or false. I have created an example of a Java ternary operator here. Look at this statement or part of the statement that I'm marking here. This part of the statement consists of three things. First of all, a condition, which can be evaluated to either true or false. And in this case, it is the condition text case dot equals the string uppercase. And text case, as you can see, is a variable, which I've declared right here, and which I for now have set to the value uppercase. Uh, the second part of this ternary operator statement or expression is the value to evaluate the ternary operator expression to in case this condition is true. And the third is the value to evaluate this ternary operator expression to if this condition here is false. So, in other words, if text case equals the string uppercase, then this expression here is evaluated to John in uppercase char capital characters. And if not text case equals uppercase, then this expression here is evaluated to John in lowercase characters. And let's try to run this example here and see that it prints out John in, in uppercase characters, because for now we have set this variable here that we are using in the condition as uh, we have set that to uppercase in lowercase characters, but that doesn't really matter. It's just set to the text uppercase. To be a little bit more specific, a ternary operator consists of a condition, then a question mark, then the value to um, evaluate the ternary operator to in case the condition is true, and then a colon, and then the value to evaluate the ternary operator to in case the condition is false. And since this expression is evaluated to a value, you can use a ternary operator everywhere that you are using, for instance, a field value. So you could use it as, a, as we do here, where we assign the evaluated value of the ternary operator to a variable, or we could use it as an parameter value, you, we could have copied this whole thing in into the um, println here, and whatever would be the output of this ternary operator would then be printed out to system out. We can just try that just so that you can see it, that this is true. So that is in a little bit more detail how the ternary operator is defined. Now let me show you how to use the ternary operator to um, implement the functionality of a max function. I have already prepared a little bit here, and we'll just delete this one for now. Look at this. First we declare one variable here, val1, and we set the value to 10. Then we declare another value here, or a variable here called val2, and we set it to 20. Then you can see here that I declare a variable called max, and I set it to the value evaluated from this ternary expression, or this ternary operator expression. And the condition of this ternary operator is if val1 is larger than or equal to val2. If that is true, then this ternary operator will return val1. If val1 is not larger than or equal to val2, then this ternary operator expression will evaluate to val2. And so this will work like a max function. The largest of these two values here will be returned from this expression. And let's try to run it and see if that is not true. And as expected, 
the maximum value is 20, which is the value of val2. And because val1 is not larger than or equal to val2, then val2 is returned. Now let me just show you how easy it is to turn this ternary operator example into a minimum function. Right, we change the name of the variable here, and we simply switch the uh, greater than um, operator to a less than operator. And I turn it, change the name here as well. Now, in case val1 is less than or equal to val2, then this operator, terminary, uh, ternary operator example will return val1, and if not, it will return val2. And since val1 is actually less than or equal to val2, then it will actually, in uh, in practice, when run, return val1. Let's just run it and see if that is not correct. It should write min 10 here, and it does. The last thing I want to show you in this ternary operator video tutorial is how you can chain ternary operators um, to essentially have it uh, evaluate multiple um, ternary operators in the same statement. Look at this statement first. We declare here um, an input variable when we set it to null. Then we have the beginning here of one ternary operator which compares input to null and if that is true then the value minus one is returned from this ternary operator if input is not null if that is false then you can see I have as the second value of the first ternary operator inserted a second ternary operator which again compares input to um, the empty string because now we know that input is not null, right? Because if it was null, then minus one would be returned. So it is not null. Now we check first is it, if it is equal to the empty string. And if it is, we return the value zero. And if not, then we simply pass the input string into a number. And now let's try to run this with different values for the input variable and see how it behaves. Let's first run it with the value null. You can see it will print out minus one. Oh, actually, we have forgot to print out value. So it prints nothing, but that is fixed here. See, now it prints out minus one. Now let's try to set it to the empty string. So now it will be false, this first condition. So it will evaluate this ternary operator. And since the condition of this second ternary operator is true, it will return zero. Let's try to run that. And as you can see, zero is printed as expected. And then let's try to insert the value, textual value 123, which is 123. And let's try to run it. And because this ternary operator, the second one here that is chained into the first one, that the condition is now false, then it will return the second um, value in the ternary operator, which is this string passed to an int and then printed, which is the number 123. As you can see, the ternary operator is a handy way of returning a value depending on some condition. And you can even chain these ternary operators so that you can evaluate many conditions as I've shown here. That is all I have to say about the ternary operator in this video. Uh, for more information uh, related to the Java ternary operator, look in the description below the video and you will find links there. For instance, a link to a textual version of this tutorial.